Hey team, Bang is here again. We were out four driving the other day, up in the bush, up in the mountains, and we got a flat tire, and we discovered it was a stick that had gone through the wall of this tire. So we've got to get it back on the road tomorrow. Uh, we need to keep going, and what we're gonna to have to do is try a temporary repair. We're gonna leave the spare on. The spare is in really good nick. It's a highway pattern, these are all terrains. So we've got a pretty standard tire repair kit. Now, this is just really, you get several things in these kits. You get your rubber cement, needed, absolutely. You get a rasp. So this is to go in and clear out the hole where you've had the screw or whatever that's been done the damage. Then you've got your pieces of rubber that are gonna go in and plug up the hole. So you put cement on your plug and then you feed it through this eye and you'll note this eye, you feed it through and the eye has a gap in it at the bottom. So when you pull it back out, you put it in, pull it back out and that it comes, it, it is able to be pushed in, but when it comes back out, it leaves the rubber behind. Let's get into it. So what you'll note here is, some of the best case scenario is you get a screw in the tread of your tire on the nice thick part. So this has a lot of, this ha these, the nice thick part. So this has a lot of meat to grab into. Right, one of the problems is this stick that we got, which, and it was right here, it was right here on the inside wall of the tire. So I've never seen a stick actually go through a tire wall, but it was, it was all the way through and stick it out. And that's what ended up making the tire go flat. So I've pumped this up since just gently and found that I'm pretty sure they're confident this is the only leak, but you can see there it's, it's actually, it's not on the tread part of the tire. It's on the wall of the tire. So that may in fact be it's not the best repair there and in fact we probably need a new tire because that can then propagate and start to deep the tire will, will, will fail but for this for this purposes i think there's enough rubber there for it to get us out of trouble to run it as a as a as, a, as an emergency spare so uh let's get into it so we're going to lay this down first thing i'm going to do is i'm going if if you if you've got this available i have in the shop since we're back in the shop i've got a valve a valve remover so if i can get it out of the jar so we're going to put that in there now this is a little valve remover i'm going to remove the valve to make sure there's no air pressure in the tire now if you're emergency on the side of the road and you didn't have one of these you just hold the valve down until it's completely has no air in it and you probably don't want to be doing that because it'd be dirty on the side of the road however I've just found it's best to make sure that valve's out, then there's no, you know there's no air in the tire whatsoever. So we'll put that aside. Now we're gonna flip this back over and find our, we'll flip this over and find our, get ourselves into a nice position. Now I've had a heavy old thing. This is off a BT50. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is get this spike and gently I, 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 can, I can sort of predict as which way it went in. Not that way, not that way, yeah, I can, I can fit, there it is, there, right. So I was, I was gently feeling around, sort of like the trajectory as if it had been stabbed that way and that's how it's been stabbed. So what I'm gonna do is just go back and forth with this rasp, get any of the junk that's out of there. Huh, there's some of that, you can see the old bit of the, stick that was still in there. So, and I'm, I'm sort of maintaining that angle and I'm keeping that angle. Now I'm not gonna go too hard with this. I'll probably go a few just to really clean that hole out. I'm just twisting it slightly. There we go. I'm not going too hard because I still want some of that rubber, but I wanna rough it up and have just fresh rubber there. So that's pretty good. That's great. Okay, so now we've done that. Now we grab one of these, and these are these are a pretty damn sticky stuff. This has stuff on it that inter, that, that it interacts with uh, chemically interacts with the uh, rubber cement, and ends up becoming a total bit of a goo situation. Now I'm just feeding that through that eyelet. There's a big eyelet there. I'm going to feed that through this way, and it's a bit of a 
punish to get started if you don't have a set of pliers on you. But we're just gonna put that there and start to pull that through. We're gonna pull that through into the middle of that eyelet and we're gonna have it so that it's halfway. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that we put some of this cement. We're gonna open this cement. We're just gonna lay that down, keep it clean. Open the cement. Now this stuff ends up acting pretty quick. Now we've stabbed that, we've opened up that cement. There it goes. And we're just gonna get this, oh, there we go, she's coming out now. We're just gonna completely coat this. Oh, she's huffy, you can smell it. We're gonna completely coat this and you sort of, you don't really wanna get this on your fingers, all around the middle, not so much on the tail, but in the, just all up on the sides. You really wanna make sure you get this whole thing coated up nicely. Whoop. Right. Now, I, I normally, this is what I do, I don't know if it's legit, but I, I just dob some around the hole there. Now, we're gonna push this in. We're gonna push this into the hole on that same angle. Got to be careful not to go all the way in. So we, we're going in, we're going in, we're going. Oh, just like that. All right, we went too far. Okay, so we'll get a second one. Got to act quick now. That's a bit of a trap for young players. All right, so we're going a second one. We're through the eyelet there. Whoops, come on. Oh, sticky. Through the eyelet. Halfway. Like you, I've got my pliers on me. So halfway through the eyelet, now we're going to get some more cement. Put that all over that. Working quick now. Now we're going to go in here and I've got to be careful not to punch it all the way through like I did before. Got a bit excited. There we go. Got it. Right, twist that around there, and I'll pull that back out. It comes out the gap in the eyelet there. Okay, so that's her. That's it, just make sure that rubber, that uh, cement is all, I mean, this is what I do, I just rub all that cement around like that. Make sure it's all completely sealed up there. This doesn't take long to set. I normally give it five minutes and then reinflate the tire. And I've never, I've never, I've never had one of these leak. They're a pretty good system. It just seems to be the right thing. And I've actually had them on tires where, yeah, you know, tractor tires and other and other Ute tires that I've done the repair and just left it in there. And the tire's been fine for the rest of the life of the tire. So there you go. We'll give that. We'll give that five minutes. And then when she's uh, when she's set, we'll give her a pressure test. See if we can't use it as an emergency tyre. Now, of course, our life's easy because we're in the shop, but of course, here in the field, you get your compressor, you get your car compressor out. So we're just gonna give this, I usually just give this about 10 PSI to start off and make sure we're not, you now we've got no other, no other random issues. So we're gonna give that. And just check your seat all the way around. This didn't come off the bead because it was parked at the time when we found the leak. So it's gonna take a fair bit there. We'll take it up to 10. Just nice and easy. So there's 10 there, beautiful. I can't hear anything. So it's got a little bit of pressure in it. We'll just come over, wah, just come over and check our repair here. Yeah. Looking pretty good. All right, we'll keep going with the pumping her up. Take her up to probably 25. Whoop, get off there. There we go. Can't hear any other leaks. That's 25. Right over there. Okay, that's looking really good. Nice. We'll take her all the way. We'll go to 40. So there you have it. There's our repair. Not a, not a zip of air coming out of that. So that was 
the review of the use of eight piece SCA tire repair kit. And that was from, we just picked that up from, as you know, SCA from Super Cheap Auto. I, it, it wasn't, I think it was 20 bucks or something. So, but that's got us out of trouble and that will last. And then the only th other thing they recommend, now if I had my side cutters here somewhere, well, I'd, I'd nip this off with the side cutters, but let's say I'm out in the field, I've got my Stanley knife. They recommend just cutting these, cutting this off a little bit. Now I'm just gonna be careful there and go away from the tire, of course. There we go, cut that one off. There we go. And it doesn't have to be flush. Just leave, I mean, if it's on the tread part, it wears off. But this bit, uh, that's a good repair. So there you go. If you get a puncture in your tire and you wanna have a go at repairing it, I highly recommend, these repair kits are a bit better than you think. They'll definitely get you out of trouble and get you an emergency repair. But I've also, like I said, I've also had them repair the tire and at last, if it's in a nice thick piece of tread, it, it, the, on the tread of the tire, I've had the repair last the rest of the life of the tire. So hope that helps somebody. Happy projecting, good luck out there.